The concept of Zoon has always been that I wanted to form an organic company. We pronounce it wrong. It's not supposed to be pronounced Zoon. It's actually Zoon. And what that means is it's many different cultures that are formed of the same embryo. And so that concept of diversity, that organic concept, is really in the name, and it's in the culture that we've created. Having a diverse team involved in a project is extremely important. In our industry, that's it's really a requirement, is that we are pulling those groups together. And that's the most important thing that the project manager, construction manager does, is to unify and integrate all these various groups for the good of the project. The project manager role starts from the beginning of the project, when the project is in its infancy. So you work through project development, project design, any permitting that is required from environmental agencies or other regulatory agencies. And then you put a design team together to design the project. And then you come up with a project estimate, you know, in each item of the work. How much is going to cost? So you have your budget, you have your contingency budget. So you put that package together and you turn it over to the construction manager. The skill set that I rely on the most is communication. Whether that be out in the field or with other project managers, what I try to do is unify the communication between operations in the field and operation management operations and try to bring it together. Being a smaller company, you need to be able to be diverse in, in your abilities to jump from one task to another, so we sort of do a little bit of everything. Construction manager, what it does at the very beginning of the job, we have what we call a pre-construction meeting that invites all the stakeholders. So everybody gets involved at the very beginning of that meeting. You know, you establish a line of communication between different parties, and then based on the project uh, plans and specifications and estimate, you start uh, basically running the day-to-day -day operation with the contractor, working with the contractor. We've been involved with the Bay Bridge, we've been involved with the Bay Lights Project, Caldecott Tunnel, High Speed Rail, so really some very signature, very key projects in the Bay Area. The Bay Lights Project uh, originally was an idea by Mr. Ben Davis, the visionary behind the Bay Lights Project, as a way to celebrate the 75th anniversary of the Bay Bridge. I happen to be uh, involved on the East Span of the Bay Bridge as a coordinator for all the electrical work. First, I got involved just to make sure that the Bay Lights idea is not going to impact any structural components of the bridge. For us to go and talk about what we're doing and just wave our hands and explain it, it was difficult. So Parsons Brinkerhoff agreed to do a rendering of the project. We use these 3D modeling to look at certain areas of the bridge and find out where we have conflicts. It helped us develop a way to install these enclosures in certain areas by looking at these 3D renderings, making sure that it works out. The project uh, brain center is on the center anchorage of the bridge, which inside is as big as a football field. Uh, and inside there is where our power center is, it's highlighted in yellow. Then we come up to these boxes that you see highlighted behind the rail, uh, where our enclosures are for the fiber switches and the power and data supply boxes. And from there, then we bring the power in CAT6 to the fixtures that go up uh, to the cables. We had about 300 suspender cables on the bridge, on the north side of the bridge. The cables are sequenced, you can see the color coded, and then the fixtures come in uh, to a maximum of 60 fixtures per strand. So on the tall cables, which are about 250 feet tall, we have four set of fixtures. The fixtures are custom made, fully molded. They went through extended testing phase. And I did my own low-tech uh, tests in my office. I actually grabbed a strand of uh, lights and uh, sunk it into a bucket of salty bay water for six months in my office and plugged it in, and it worked flawlessly. So it has passed all the tests. 
But that basically lays out everything that we have, all 25,000 LEDs, all 700 boxes uh, for the enclosures, and all 100,000 feet of wiring that we have on this project. Typically, you're building a three-dimensional object, but you're reflecting it in a two-dimensional set of plans. It's all on paper. With 3D modeling, all of a sudden you're able to resolve conflicts before you get to construction. A lot of the issues are that when you put things on 2D, they, they, you miss something. For the Bay Bridge, we use this 3D modeling to look at certain areas of the bridge when we have a lot of conduits going through this structure still and find out where we have conflict. Obviously with the suspension bridge, expansion and contraction uh, with the cable, are a big deal and we knew that they, they're going to expand in the summertime heat and contract during the winter so we wanted to make sure that our lights are attached to the suspended cables in a way that they can move uh, freely so the idea that we came up with uh, was uh, attaching the strands of lights with uh, zip ties and especially designed clip that uh, would allow for expansion and contraction of the system and then all the other components are attached to the structure by U-bolts so it doesn't impact uh, the components. So there is no drilling, no welding, nothing that permanently affect the structural components of the bridge. So this package for that one cable comes in one pallet. They are preloaded with uh, our specially designed clip and uh, UV rated zip ties with a steel grip. Uh, so that they can last uh, for the 10 years that we have. Uh, and uh, the electricians, uh, they go from the cable and come down and attach these every six inches to the suspender cable, attach the leader cables as they needed for the higher cables, and bring them down and hook up onto the enclosure. And Bay Bridge carries about 280,000 vehicles a day, so closing lanes during the day, during the commute hours, is not an option. So our productive work essentially starts at 11 o'clock at night. And by 5 a.m. in the morning, we have to be completely off the road. That means the last cone has to be picked up. Because if you're not picked up by 5 o'clock in the morning, we get fined $10,000 for every 10 minutes or any fraction off. So if you're one minute late, you still get $10,000 fine. So it's very important for our field engineers to make sure that they check the production rate of the operation, along with everything else they need to check for quality control, quality assurance. That's when you know, their engineering uh, skills come to play, that they need to calculate how much more time you need to finish this, unloading this truck, roll it, um, wait for it to cool off so it can open up the traffic on time. This is very important for young engineers coming out of school to get that field experience. So they know exactly how everything that they learned in theory how is it really done in the field? Maybe having them negotiate a change order with a contractor or having them work with an agency, a regulatory agency like Fish and Game or EPA or Fish and Wildlife or whoever it may be, and have them understand that people in this industry are very important. These are the people that you're gonna be around every day and if you don't get along with them or if you don't click with them, it's going to be a long 20 years or so. As engineers, and I am a civil engineer and that's my background, we go to college, we go to school, we learn a lot of the technical items that we need to learn about, you know, structures and soils and hydraulics and hydrology and all of that stuff. And that's important, don't get me wrong. We all need to understand the, the, the environment that we're working in. But I feel that the area that is deficient in, in our industry is people skills. And that we don't learn at school. And so if, if I were to change maybe something in the way engineers are, are educated today is I would teach them more team building, partnering skills, communication skills, so that they can be ready for what, what's out there for them once they graduate. In construction, every day is different. You, know, you go to work, uh, today is different than yesterday and tomorrow will be something different. So you never get bored. It's always a surprise. Waking up in the morning and finding out what this company is going to do is always a surprise to me, and it's a thrill. The, the day that I start planning where Zoon is going to be in six months is the day that I need to retire. As long as we're having fun, we're enjoying it, we're doing good work, we're adding value to our communities, we're adding values to the projects that we're working on, 
then I'm satisfied with it.